once the control room is built, because they get sat in 24 7, and, and we spend almost a thousand bucks on those. But, but in fairness, they, they've actually. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, but you know, when a chair gets sat in 24 7, yeah, I'm good at it, it's. It's a lot of work on the chin. Yeah. <coughs> I agree 100%. Yeah. I'm going to have to put mine in the pull up position and cut a sleeve. Yeah. Yeah. So it can't go down. Yeah. Yeah. To, to, to it almost it's assist, on the, yeah. Yeah. assist the piston. Kind of oh, yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't hey, sink as well. She bought it for me for Christmas. Brutal. 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 All right. Good morning, everyone. It's 7 a.m. on Wednesday, June 28th. And we'll call this meeting the Fergus Falls City Council Committee the whole tour. Roll call, please. Here. 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 And we have a quorum. First item of business this morning is a discussion on city project 5959 parking recommendations. We'll call on our city engineer, Brian Yvaro. Good morning, Brian. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor and Council members. Council members. Um, as you know, we last uh, meeting we request authorization to advertise for Stanton Avenue reconstruction project from Broadway to Union Avenue. As I noted in that memo, it's still under review from state aid. A uh, portion of this project, I have an exhibit on the screen right now uh, showing Stanton Avenue from Vine Street to Union. Um, the local world road authority, such as the city, can establish diagonal parking. Uh, however, to meet eight state aid rules 8820, uh, the city has to pass two resolutions, which is requested action. Uh, these resolutions are established between the city and the state. As if we refer to the exhibit right now, this is, this is Stanton Avenue from Vine Street to Union. Um, as noted, that currently the current configuration is parallel parking on both sides. On the south side of Stanton, we're proposing diagonal parking, and on the north side, still parallel parking. However, to meet these standards, we're going to have to pass a resolution restricting parking, kind of boxed out in the area, pretty much on the northwest side, northeast side, excuse me, of Stanton Avenue to allow for uh, the diagonal parking on the south side. Um, as I noted, parking is a is a concern. However, with restricting the parking on the north side and permitting diagonal parking on the south side of Stanton, if you take into account what we still, is not shown is a new approach to the flower mill site, just located on the bottom side of the screen. Uh, but with both these changes and everything, the net, we're still estimating about a net of four additional parking spots within this block. So if acceptable is what I'm requesting, a resolution restricting parking on the north side of Stanton from Vine Street to Union Avenue. Also, a second is a resolution designating diagonal parking on the south side of Stanton from Vine Street to Union Avenue. So. Thanks, Brian. And we can do this through a motion to bring this to the council on Monday night. I can make that, Your Honor. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks, Scott. Questions for Brian? What I guess I have a question. Was there a request for that, Brian? As far as that parallel restricted parking, what would that be for? The restrict, excuse, if, uh, well, this is a requirement by the state. Oh, okay. Because this is a state aid route, we have to <coughs> apply by 8820 statute rules. So upon this review with D4, this is what they informed us, one of the requirements before they'll grant final clearance. It, was that like for yeah, handicap parking then over there? That particular area right there, I think that was just standard parallel parking. I don't think there's a designated. However, uh, with Stanton Avenue, we, we, either it's going to be Stanton Avenue, we will be looking at having a handicapped ADA stalls there, or the parking lot that's to be uh, improved here in the future. <coughs> the development of the flour mill and another agenda item uh, at this meeting here. So. I, I guess the term, I'm trying to, it says restricted. Um, what is it restricted to? No parking. Okay, so no parking at yes. all. Okay. Any other questions? We have a motion to bring this to the council Monday night. All in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Next item up for discussion is the Aquatic Center project presentation. Again, Brian, you are. Yes, thank you. Uh, for the past few months, uh, multiple city staff members, along with community volunteers, have been working with JLG Architects and their subconsultants uh, during the final design phase for the new aquatic center. Uh, JLG has substantially completed the project plans and specifications, so we're here to, today to request advertisement for bids. <coughs> a representative, I'll turn it over to him momentarily, uh, from JLG will give you a PowerPoint presentation of the project as currently proposed. Uh, 
please note there's going to be we're at 95 percent we have a few minor changes but we believe it's in uh, presentable form at this time uh, the estimated cost for the base base bid work items is 8.2 million dollars there are alternates that we're proposing to for an additional eight hundred thirty thousand dollars so a total combined construction contract is estimated at nine nine million one hundred eight thousand dollars that's including all alternates uh, because of this we must have publicly advertised for bids for a minimum 21 <coughs> day we haven't set the actual bid bid opening date yet however we anticipate opening bids here in late july uh, prices, if favorable prices are received, a recommendation will be brought back to this council uh, with also recommendations with the corresponding uh, alternates that will be presented to here in a moment. As noted in the past, this, uh, this project is the local option sales tax that are publicly financed project bonds is a current funding, funding mechanism. Presently, the city has legislative authority for a $10.8 million project. So at this time, I'll just turn it over to Adam. He'll walk you through some of the project uh, exhibits right now. Thanks, Brian. <clears throat> Welcome, Adam. Good morning. Uh, Adam Barnett with GLG Architects. Um, yes, yeah, so we're here to talk about the Roosevelt uh, Pool Project, what we're, uh, which started as the Fergus Falls Aquatics Project, now calling it the Roosevelt Park Pool Project. Um, you can see uh, the site plan, kind of the area plan uh, up on the screen right now, giving you an idea of how the project will sit in, uh, in Roosevelt Park. Um, ultimately, the building and the pool itself were sited such to minimize the impact to the trees. Um, as you can see in this view with the superimposed, there's, there's still a lot of trees out there, so we did everything we could to um, be respectful uh, and also trying to work with the unique grade at that site. If anybody's been out there, it's very um, kind of a, a crown site with some uh, some hills is rolled off to to the south there um, but uh, via access to this site will be off of randolph avenue and uh, north burlington avenue there uh, to the east if you want to go to the next one kind of get a little more detail here um, so this is the uh, the plan uh, again a little bit uh, larger scale um, starting on the right uh, is the parking lot uh, we've got parking stalls for, uh, I think we landed at 28, 30, uh, 30 parking, off-street parking in the, uh, the lot itself um, with some additional overflow parking um, in, from the school to the north. And we're doing some um, improvements in terms of sidewalk connections and what have you um, to make that connection um, more accessible and, and easier um, to utilize. And then uh, working from right to left, um, the large rectangle to the right is the bathhouse. You kind of see three smaller rectangles. We're looking down on the roof. Those are um, what we're calling light monitors where we kind of pop the roof up a little bit to bring some daylight down into the locker room spaces. Um, and then the, uh, the two rectangles that are kind of striped, if you will, those are um, uh, canopies on either side, the front of the building and the pool deck side of the building. Uh, to offer some, some shading for folks as there may be kids waiting to get picked up by their parents or on the pool deck side, shading over lockers, uh, over the concession stand window and, and that sort of thing. Um, working uh, to the left again, then we get into the pool deck area. You can see we've got two uh, pool vessels. Um, the larger one kind of right in the middle of the drawing that's got kind of that radius corner. That is a zero depth entry pool, so it's basically a pool that emulates a beach. So it goes from zero depth of water uh, down to a depth of 42 inches. Uh, and all those kind of little things you see there, those are all um, amenities for, for kids uh, to play with uh, on, this, on this pool. Um, number five, kind of the larger one in the, in the bottom left corner of that pool is a, a really neat kind of jungle gym structure that has a couple slides and it'll spray water. Um, there's a large bucket that dumps water and that sort of thing. And then the other ones are kind of various spraying um, pumps and that sort of thing uh, for various ages of, of children. We do have a water table included for the real little kids. Um, and there's also um, kind of a toddler slide uh, that's gonna have an otter theme to match uh, the community. Um, and then Kind of to the upper left of that pool, you'll see um, two water slides in the project right now. So a tower, and then we've got two slides. And uh, as Brian mentioned, we do have 
a number of items that are going to be bid as alternates. Um, that is simply just a strategy to help control the budget on bid day, make sure that you guys have some options to pick and choose some things that could be added into the project. If the number's coming good, if the numbers aren't coming in quite so good, then maybe we're not, we're not taking all those alternates, but you guys still have a, a great project to move forward. So one of those slides on the bid is an alternate, but in the base bid does include the tower um, and, and one of those water slides. Uh, moving to the left further, um, on the very end, west end of the pool deck, you'll see um, another rectangle there. That is a four lane uh, lap pool. So that pool goes from about three and a half feet to a depth of nine feet, which allows you to do some lifeguard training and things of that nature. Um, there's no diving board. Uh, we do have a climbing wall um, in the project. If you've seen those, they kind of cantilever out over the water and kids fall, they fall into the water. Um, that is also under an alternate bit item. Uh, and then if you look kind of around the pool deck, you'll see we're suggesting, um, you know, lounge chairs and some furniture, uh, furnishings, things of that nature. The, the colored squares, the A2 tag, those are shade structures. One of the things that we hear in a lot of the pools we do is that um, there's never enough shading devices. So we've uh, added some extra in here, if you will, that will be bid as alternates. Um, so we'll get individual pricing on, on those um, to see how they come back. And then there's also in the base bid um, a shade structure over that curved part of the, of the uh, zero depth entry pool. So if you got the really little, little kids in there, they can play in the water and still be covered out of the sun. Um, a couple other uh, notable things on this plan. On the very south end of the building, um, I think it's number 10 there, uh, there's kind of an open area that we left for um, food trucks. So we could support up to two food trucks uh, to come in and serve um, a little more than what you might be offering at the concessions, you know, if you're just serving hot dogs or that sort of thing. You have somebody come in and, and do something a little bit more unique. So I wanted to accommodate um, that as well. Any questions on the site plan? Yeah. As far as, <clears throat> excuse me, as far as the food trucks go, are there going to be um, hookups for power and water? Yes, great question. So we, we provided um, electrical hookups, and that was largely because a typical food truck will run on a generator, and we didn't want that noise yep. of the generator um, that close to the pool deck for the patrons. Sure. Um, so we are providing uh, two electrical hookups. Okay. Um, everything else would be by the, by the vendor. Okay. Yep. Good question. Thank you. Any other questions on the site? Okay, yep, we can advance. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, this is the pool, the bathhouse proper, if you will. So it's um, where we saw it on the last plan, where it was kind of oriented uh, north-south. That's how it will be oriented in the park. For sake of the drawing, the building is kind of now rotated 90 degrees, if you will. So the, the dashed lines that you see um, on the top and the bottom, those are those uh, covered canopies. Um, and we'll show you the 3D images here in just a minute. Um, so how this works is the parking lot would be on the top of the page. Uh, folks come in, that little square right in the middle on the top is the ticketing window. And then from there, uh, if you come in and go to the left, you would be going into the, the men's changing room. If you go towards the right, you can access the women's changing room. And then also access the family changing rooms, which are right in the middle of the building. And like I mentioned, each three of these spaces have some access to natural light through those light monitors um, that we saw on the roof. So folks would come in, get changed, do their thing, and then they would come out on the pool deck side. You can kind of see those three doors. Um, and then we've got some deck lockers. And like I mentioned, there's that, that canopy on the, um, the deck side as well. The, the kind of the square box you see on the left side of the image, that is all the pool mechanical um, equipment. So there is a pump pit, um, there's a water service room that's coming in, there's an electrical room that serves the building, uh, a couple chemical rooms and those sorts of things. And uh, we've been working with your city staff to kind of make sure they understand how that plays out and, um, and how that will operate. Are you able to pan a little bit to the right? A little bit. Yeah, perfect. There we go. Um, so off the right uh, right side of the buildings, <laughs> said the three big spaces in the middle of the locker rooms. Off to the right, you can see the very, um, if you will, uh, the the right corner is a, a staff room with a big window um, looking out onto that pool deck. So that would be for the lifeguards. 
Uh, you can see there's a little table in there that would serve as their break space. We also have room for a cot if they have to do any sort of um, medical treatments or if a kid gets sick or something like that. Uh, and then just left of that is the, uh, the concessions window out to the pool deck. Um, so we've, uh, we've got the, that space set up. There's a free compartment sink in the back. And then um, kind of on the, the parking side of the building, there's a large storage room that would be in the top right corner. Um, just for general building storage. And then the space just left of that is storage for that concession so that they can um, store all those sorts of things that they need to uh, to serve. Any questions at all on the, the building plan? <coughs> you know, going kind of fast, last Friday we had a four hour meeting in here and went through like 75 drawings. So we spared you <laughs> the, the technical, tech, technical stuff. So um, yeah, go ahead. <coughs> Uh, these are just some exterior uh, images of the building, um, which are tough to read maybe for, for some folks. But if you look at the one on the bottom, uh, that would be the front of the building, the parking lot side of the building. You can kind of see where that um, kind of white line is running horizontally. That would be that canopy. Um, the building itself will be um, made out of precast uh, concrete, um, which is a great building material. Walls come out and 30, 40 foot sections and they tip them up and they have little pieces of steel that they weld um, to anchor those. Uh, it's really fast construction and you can do some unique things with the finishes. So uh, our plan is that um, the, the concrete itself would have kind of a wood um, texture to it. So it kind of warms it up, um, gives it a unique texture when the, when the sun is hitting it and that sort of thing. And then um, to kind of juxtapose the concrete, those three um, light monitors that pop off the roof but you can kind of see here and then that square right in the middle on the bottom picture is that ticketing um, window those will be wrapped with a product um, that's actually aluminum but it has a wood grain finish so it's zero maintenance for 40 years um, but it looks like wood kind of warms the building up it's a really nice contrast uh, to the concrete uh, so I think it's going to be a really sharp sharp looking facility for you um, the middle drawing is the, the pool deck side uh, you can see kind of the lockers that we've got, um, kind of the bluish green uh, components there. And then um, the other two drawings would be the short ends of the building. And you can kind of see those light monitors um, where they pop up and kind of a ribbon of glass on each side of those. So, uh, next, please. Uh, so we did a couple of uh, 3D renderings of the of what the building um, is intended to look like. Uh, of course, you know these are um, computer-generated images, so um, we like to say they're pretty darn accurate. But uh, you know you don't know until it's done. Uh, but you can see the kind of the the patterning and the concrete, like I was mentioning. Um, we've got some signage included in the project that would be similar um, to the signage on your library in terms of kind of illuminated at night, even to kind of give a nice glow. Um, you can see how that canopy kind of works off the uh, off the front there. So underneath that canopy would be where you get the, the ticketing and then into the locker rooms. Uh, we've got some built-in planters um, that kind of double as, as bollards and, and benches as well. So kids can sit on there, you can see, and wait for mom and dad to pick them up or what have you. Some bike racks included in the project. Um, and then that canopy material, you can kind of tell in this that it, um, it's a perforated metal, so it actually does let some light through. So it's not just going to be this dark, dark space underneath. It'll be this nice diffuse um, daylight. Next. Uh, and then this would be the, the pool deck side. So um, again, very similar, um, same construction of the canopy to kind of get that diffuse, diffuse shading there. Um, and then you can see it's kind of dark, but those lockers along there on the right, what we're seeing is um, the window into the concessions. And then the furthest most right is the door um, that will have, does have a window in it and a big side light. That's that uh, staff office looking out on the pool deck. And then you kind of see the, the three um, wood wrapped light monitors there uh, at the top. Go ahead. And then I think this is the last one. Um, We've been a little touchy about this one and uh, and how we share it, but this is looking out at the aquatics um, components themselves. We haven't um, selected the colors yet of the, the slides and that sort of thing. We've shown some options to uh, to the city and the team that's been working on this. Um, and so this reads a little 
blah right now because the slides and some of those play structures don't have a bunch of fun colors on them, but we didn't want to show something that was inaccurate. So those things will be decided as the, as the project um, continues, but you can certainly get a sense for, um, for what's there. So the, the two slides on the tower on the right there, like I mentioned, you see the, the big bucket sticking up that would dump on kids every 30 seconds or what have you. Um, and that's on top of that, um, that kind of jungle gym with a couple of smaller slides for younger kids on it. Um, and then you can really see that, uh, that shade structure on the left there that I mentioned, that's at that zero depth entry part of the pool. So like I said, the really littles can be protected from the sun since they're all day and splash in the water and, and have a great time. So I think that's the last one. So love to entertain any questions you guys might have uh, on the project. And like Brian said, we're, we're gonna be wrapping up the specs and drawings 100% here at the end of the week. Thanks, Adam. Any other any questions? Hang on, one, one question. On, on this base bid, obviously, it's you know estimated like 9.1 million. How much do we anticipate for all the auxiliary things like obviously the you know the deck chairs and I mean or should I say what's what's is this just the construction and then is all the other peripheral things? going to be on another bid? Um, that's a great question. So right now, um, I think we had the base bid construction, um, I think 8.2, right, Brian? Mm -hmm. And then there's another 800,000 in alternate construction bids. So that gets you at 9, 9.1. Um, I think our budget, we had, I want to say, almost 430,000, Brian, of um, fixtures, furnishing, and equipment. So that would be like all the deck the lounge chairs that you see, um, the, the food equipment that would go in the concessions, um, that would be in kind of that $430,000 um, placeholder uh, that you guys would procure yep. um, at the right time as the construction would, would provide. Okay, thank you. I'm Scott. Uh, winter stuff, I, you know, you see these canopies, you know, the they're going to be okay for winter i mean we're gonna you know we could probably get three feet of snow is that gonna be so that's that's a great question that came up um recently in our last meeting so those canopies do uh, require some seasonal maintenance um they're uh they're not designed to be out all winter with the heavy snow loads that we get the the canopies around the pool that i understand that you'll, yep. those would come down but the ones oh, yeah, sticking the out ones by the building, building. Yes, yes sorry yes absolutely yep those are designed um to be yes uh, okay year, year round like i said the the Material is actually perforated metal, so there's holes about this big, um, and that's a that's a metal, and that's supported on a steel like grid. It'll, su it'll support those. Absolutely. Yep. And then the rectangular pool that be covered, or is that a cement pool, so it gets completely drained and just filled this with snow? Yeah. So the the lap pool um, and the other pool, they are not covered. Um, so the the zero depth entry, that one's only three and a half feet max right. depth. So that one will get fully drained down. The, the lap pool has to get drained down just to a certain depth. So that might end up with a couple feet of water in at the end of the year um, that can stay there. Um, you just got to get it down past a certain point in the- Past the fills or the, the yeah, yeah. Yep, exactly. Thanks, Scott. Other questions? All right, we're looking for a recommendation to uh, move to the council to accept the plans and specs for this project. We can do <coughs> a motion if someone would like to offer, I would offer that. Your Honor. Thanks, Second. Jim. Thanks, Scott. Further questions, Scott? I got one question. Security cameras. Is there security involved in this? Because I'm sure we have to have something for liabilities. Is that like we never talked about? Um, yep, that's a great question. So we've got um, uh, spots for, for two cameras, actually. And the cameras that we included are at the ticketing office and at the concession so spaces where there's money so this um the site will have an eight foot security fence around it um and then it's illuminated at night for security reasons only so the hours of operation of this will basically be right. sun up sun down um and then at that point you know there's no night swimming that sort of thing that takes a lot more light and, that, and what have you um in terms of your question we recommend not to have cameras around the pools because you will open yourself up for a lot of liability if something okay. happens because you're not going to have somebody sitting at a screen 24-7. Right. Okay, that was a question yep. I'd ask. Yep, very good. Thanks. Any other final questions? We have a motion to move this uh, plans and specs to the council on Monday night. All in favor of that motion say aye. 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 All the same sign. That motion carries. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. 
All right, next up on the agenda this morning is the redevelopment agreement, or I'm sorry, the development agreement and purchase agreement with the Flower Mill LLC. And we'll call on our community development manager, Clara Beck. Good morning, Clara. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you, Adam. It's really exciting to see the whole project come together. Uh, we have been working with Mr. Kevin Bartram, who is the owner of the flower, the former flour mill building here in downtown Fergus Falls for a couple years now. And as you are aware, he has started some site work. He's doing some remediation stuff on site um, as part of his deed grant. Uh, but we have reached the point in the project where we need to enter into a development agreement with him uh, for the TIF file. So as you recall, he has received TIF financing from the city of Fergus Falls. Um, and then another part of the discussion with Kevin has been gap financing. He received a $200,000 loan through business development for Fergus Falls, which manages the city's loan funds. Um, and there is still a gap that exists of about $160,000. The way that the city has discussed with Kevin filling that gap has been the purchase of the parking lot that's adjacent to the flour mill. Um, so we've been in discussions with him for a while and we have settled on a footprint of about 20,200 square feet, which is depicted here. But what you're going to be asked to do on Monday night, and please ask me questions and stuff this morning so that when we get to Monday night, you feel prepared. Uh, but what you'll be asked to do is make take action on both of those items separately. So the development agreement as one piece of the TIF financing plan and then the purchase agreement of the parking lot as a separate action. So you have all of the materials in your packet. The development agreement is in there as is the purchase agreement. Is the development agreement in the packet? Should be, yep. Yeah. Okay. I don't see it. Huh? You don't see it? <clears throat> Okay, we'll make sure that you see the development agreement before Monday. Should be send it out there. today. Um, but the development agreement was drafted by uh, Rolf's office. It's a fairly standard. Uh, well, wait, sorry, which one isn't in there? The purchase, the purchase agreement is in, purchase is in there, but the development agreement is not. Correct. Development agreement was um, done by Taft. They do all of our development agreements surrounding our TIF financing, um, and it basically is a mirror of what's happening in the TIF plan. It just lays out the actual timeline for the development of the building itself and what the TIF financing is covering. <clears throat> so any questions? Thanks, Clara. Mm -hmm. um, Bill. And I'll cover the, the financing side of this. So the 160,000 um, purchase price, when we originally presented this to you, we were looking at doing that over five years to the developer. And in speaking with Rolf, he said, well, that would make that a contract for deed, and it's better if we just purchase it outright so that we own it outright. So when it comes time to pave it, the city council has control over that. So we'll pay for this out of the general fund, and then I'm going to work with the tax levy committee as far as we levy back over five years to replenish that would be the plan. So that's the financing mechanism. We would pay cash for it and have a, you know, a clean transaction okay, at this thanks, time. Thanks, Bill. Uh, question regarding the, uh, I know we had talked at one point about possibly including it in bids for Stanton Avenue or paving it, and there had been some discussions with uh, the agreement with all the businesses there outstate as far as paving their portion. What's the, what, what is the, where we sit with uh, plans for improvements to that parking lot? It's, yeah, Brian can maybe answer that more fully, but it is not currently part of bids going with the Stanton project. Okay, okay. So it's a future, it's a, it'd be a future standalone project if we, if and when we pave that. But that's not part of this agreement, it's just a purchase of it for now. Yep, so we'd be purchasing an unimproved lot and it, and it would be up to us later on down the road to do that improvement. Okay, any questions? Just yes. to clarify, it's the diagonal stuff, right? Clear, is that yeah, this, what you see there. In so if we wanted to a a asphalt that, we'd asphalt it when he did the rest of his parking lot. I would think that would be the yeah, way to do it. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. But I think he's doing part of the, well, we'll, 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 we'll right. let that sit. Uh, okay, so we need I just to wanted to clarify where the, I just, I can't see it very well. I mean, yeah, yep. And I don't, it doesn't come up with my phone, so yeah, I see it. Yeah. Sounds good. So we would look for a motion to bring these two separate items to the council for discussion and uh, action on Monday night. Someone like to, we can do them with a, we'll bring them together to the I council. Can make one of them, you know, okay. Okay. Brent got the motion to, yep. Anthony second. We can bring them to the council together, right? 
Everyone's all right with that? All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. We'll have that discussion on Monday night. Thank you, Clara. Uh, next item of discussion is the sound system rental fee, and we'll call on Guy Taylor, our public <coughs> works director. Good morning, Guy. Good morning. Thank you, Your Honor. As users have um, been renting out and using the pavilion, they've seen our sound system stored in the storage room there, and they've inquired about using it. So uh, we feel it's appropriate to allow its use uh, since we've got it. So we're asking the council to amend the fee schedule to include that sound system, a rental rate of $300 per event. And with that, we would only allow qualified um, techs to run that sound system. And we've got a list of people that we feel are qualified to do that. Um, Michael Burgraff has suggested that rate, the $300. He says that's a fair industry standard rate. So. Uh, just recommending that rental rate be added to the fee schedule. Thanks, Guy. Uh, question, is that for <coughs> any, um, any location? Or it's, it's not specific to the Riverfront Pavilion, or it is? It is not, yeah, no. So it's just it, citywide. If someone wanted to rent that, it's it, because it's a portable unit, obviously, right? Yes. And, exactly. that, and there's a sound system that's included, a, a mini sound system, if you will, that's included in the Riverfront that comes with uh, basic rental, correct? Yeah, and actually that... Initially, it was just a speaker system tied to the uh, sound equipment or the uh, like a Bluetooth yeah. uh, radio and phone kind of projection. Um, but we recently added a wireless mic to it, so uh, we can. People can you? And that's included. That's not. I mean, that's included in the basic rental for the pavilion. Yes, yeah. it is. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're looking for recommendations of the council. I'll, I'll make that, and I've got a question as well. Okay, we got a I'll motion. Second. second. Uh, okay, go ahead, Anthony. On, on that, um, on, on the riverfront square, um, when I walked past it this morning, there's somebody smoking in it. Um, is there other? I, I didn't really look to see whether there was any no smoking signs. On there it. are not. It, no. Is it something we should or shouldn't have? It's. I don't. I don't know. It's up. I wouldn't be opposed. There are so many cigarette butts over there. Yeah, I mean it's. Uh, it's city property. Right. Um, I mean, we you don't allow we don't allow smoking in this building. Um, it's, and it's a public space, so I, I would like them maybe staff do some research or something on that and come back. We can bring that on. And, but I wouldn't be opposed to seeing it being a non-smoking area. We've got a lot of money invested in it. Yeah. One thing I didn't note. Sorry. Yeah, please. Um, the fee to the technician would be paid would be just a separate deal between the user and the tech. We, we wouldn't have that fee run through the city at all. And is there some sort of qualification that, not to open up a can of worms, but some sort of... City approved list city, of, city approved of list. operators. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we have a motion to bring this to the council on Monday night. All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, that motion carries. Thanks, Guy. Uh, guys up again with refuse truck purchase. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, yeah, as we have issues with delivery of vehicles, we're actually planning for a 2024 purchase. This would be a, a regular one-armed truck, similar to the ones, or exactly like the ones that we've got in service right now. Um, just planning ahead for a 2024 purchase. Uh, price would be 342 112.80 uh, minus a $55,000 trade-in brings a total purchase price of 287 112.80. Um, and that would come from the equipment fund. And uh, of course, that budget's not set, but we would make sure to have that uh, plan for purchase included in that plan for that year. Thanks, guys. Someone like to? I, I'd, make an, I'd like to offer it. And I'd like to, I got a question. Thanks, Scott. Someone second. second. Tom, go ahead, Scott. As you, you and I talked earlier this week uh, about uh, keeping that truck, the, the, the trade-in, for a spare because uh, of the problems we've been having with these things. And, and I think it would be a good idea. It's going to be worth $55,000 for quite a while. Um, I think it would be a good idea to, to have it stored so when we have this truck go down, um, we can keep going. As you know, the last couple of weeks we've been dealing with this thing, and it takes forever to get parts, and I think it's just a a good idea to, and if it doesn't get used in the first year or something then I'm sure we can get rid of it for the 55,000 I just uh, think it's a good idea to keep it as a total truck not a parts truck but just a total complete unit 
with the 2023 purchase that is on order, hopefully it'll be delivered in August, September. Um, council did authorize us to keep that truck that would have been traded. So we'll have that one back up. Um, right now, the scenario we're in hasn't happened before where we've had two trucks down for a few days on end. So um, I don't know how necessary it is. I think one backup would be sufficient. Uh, a couple other things is real estate storage area. Uh, that was going to be my next question. A, is there a place to store it? <laughs> yeah, it would have to be outside probably at the landfill. Okay. And then uh, 55000 doesn't seem like a lot of money really, but when it comes to other equipment, mowers, another pickup, another squad car, um, that, that would cover. So is there one better than the other in the, in the, of the two? Oh, yeah, and we would make sure we keep okay. the best. Okay. Thanks, we, had a mo we have a motion. Bring this for consideration to the council on Monday night. All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Oh, same sign. That motion carries, thank you. Uh, next up is, again, Guy Taylor, with a discussion on a chicken permit amendment. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, we've um, had a request to amend the chicken ordinance due to um, the quail um, being the same kind of use as chickens. Um, the eggs are a delicacy. They're good in protein and all that. So um, we'd just like to amend the chicken ordinance, the chicken permitting ordinance, to allow for quail, um, same number of quail, and um, the process for permitting would be identical as the chicken permit. So what I provided in the packet um, with dash quail, so, you know, inserted, you know, every time chickens are mentioned in the ordinance, we would just not do that. We would just put in the definition what a quail is and allow um, chicken and quail to be covered under that complete ordinance. That was a recommendation from Roll. Correct. Thanks, Guy. And we can do this. We can bring this to, to the uh, council through a motion. You can make that, and I got a question. Yeah, I have a question too. I'll say <laughs> <laughs> Currently, oh, sorry. Do they curl? They aren't loud. No. Do they? Are these oh, like quail. domesticated, where their wings are clipped? Because quail fly like more than. Chickens. They would have to stay in their coop or an enclosed run. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was mine was noise and taking off. <laughs> okay. So. You're hunting up. Well, I assume they've so. got these things. Yeah. And Kyle's got another yeah. covered, but. Yeah, with that permitting process, <coughs> the adjoining neighbors have to yeah. consent to allowing them. So. Yeah. And right now, our ordinance sets the limit of 20 permits annually. Uh, throughout the city okay. and i don't think okay 10. okay thanks man. thanks guy all right <clears throat> we'll have uh we'll have a, a we have a motion to bring this to the council on monday night all in favor of that motion say aye aye, aye. aye. both same sign that motion carries thank you guy uh next up is a city code 154.038 amendments and again we'll call well we'll call on andrew bremseth Clara. Oh, see, you. see you later, Andrew. All right, we'll call on Community Development Manager Clara Beck once again. Hello. Yeah, I thought Andrew was going to take this one. Uh, so we have been um, in discussions at previous council meetings uh, regarding a conditional use permit for a downtown business who wanted to also branch into manufacturing, also in a downtown location um, of uh, hemp derived THC edibles which are currently legal and um, that CUP process raised some questions about what we have in our zoning code regarding manufacturing in downtown areas and then I think specifically about shared kitchen spaces so this is a time for you guys to talk a little bit about what you would like to see in the city code regarding CUPs for manufacturing in downtown areas and then more broadly, if you have more discussion about the code that's, that is currently in place for hemp-derived THC edibles. Thanks, Clara. I, I think, you know, my, my issue was as much the shared kitchen space. And I think in premises where there's going to be under 21 people there on a regular basis. So I, I think I don't have an issue in 
you know, if, if kind of Sugar High wanted to manufacture it in their physical premise and sell it in their premise, I think that is fine. But in a premise where you're going to have under 21s and a shared kitchen space where you're going to get contamination, because even in the state literature, they talk about contamination of, of product. So I think for me, that would be the, the uh, I, I, manufacturing downtown isn't an issue. It's just where it is. So maybe amending code to state no shared kitchens. Yeah, and and no and no manufacturing where where there's persons under the 21 years of age on a regular basis. I think we were impacting two two other businesses. You know that and opening them up to some liabilities. Are they? Yeah. <coughs> Are they manufacturing in the other facilities, you know? No, the reason I'm asking this is because there's a couple machines out there, and I've seen one that's a pretty good-sized one, and I don't know, Kyle, have you seen these machines that make these, that uh, hemp processing machines? There's one in the area. And uh, it uh, it's a rather large machine, and it's kind of noisy. And so I just don't know if we should have manufacturing in the business area, period, just go to move to the industrial park, which would be a good spot, I think, for them, because... Some people do it just a small area, but some of them can take a, bring a machine in and do it. So <clears throat> it's just kind of like a, a question. I think we should talk about that too, because it's, uh, and I could get some more information <coughs> about this machine that I know about. I haven't uh, talked to the, the guy yet, but uh, to see what, how noisy it is and how big it is, and you know, because that's, it would be legal to put that in town in the, in the business district. So it would still be. Oh, sorry. It, it would still be. A, I mean, it's manufacturing. That's what it is. It's 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 taking hemp or using the hemp and it's uh, uh, processing it. So, going from a little tabletop thing to a, and I don't know how big it is. I can't remember. I, I Kyle, have you seen it? I don't. Uh, I think you have to be mindful of the definition of manufacturing. So I think in one person's mind, she might be making pro, you know, products. That we consider mm -hmm. manufacturing. Scott is referring to. I would call it industrial mm -hmm. manufacturing. Right. So I, I think it goes to defining what manufacturing, what manufacturing is, and, and uh, what's allowed and what is. Right. Allowed. And I'm not against either one of them. I'm just trying to talk about the parameters. What we're going to do with this within the city. So. Well, it seems like they would be subject to noise ordinance probably too. But, so and you're right. But I'm going <coughs> to Monday night. I'll have a, a lot more better definition of it. I'm going to go sure. look at the thing myself. So. Your One Honor. thing that I would bring up, having worked in the kitchens that have been under consideration, having um, control and ownership over them and seeing different products manufactured there, it seems to me like a lot of these issues could be um, dealt with, with with just some controls over what's stored in the facilities. Um, you know, if we're talking about contamination, we probably have a lot bigger problems um, than simply um, THC. If we're talking about cross-contamination, we've got cleanliness and other other issues that the Department of Health and the um, state regulate. So it seems to me like if, because you have an alcohol, you have alcohol used in cooking, you have alcohol, you know, people under the age of 18 serving, you know, able to, or under 21 able to serve and in the kitchens where alcohol is used. And there's all kinds of um, areas where I think that with some simple consideration and, and again I, it, this is for discussion right but I think if you had storage I think storage is the main thing for me like we're accessed you know if, if people are using a product that's legal and um, if they're storing it and, and not having it open so that others can walk in and access this product um, you would be able to address these issues but if they're if we're going to not allow shared kitchens at all I guess it kind of takes that out of consideration to Jim. I don't think that this is an issue that we can settle here right today. I think this is something that we need a workshop on, work session, where we can get all the information out and, and not just run something by by the seat of our pants. We need to really look into it and do it right. Yeah, I agree. I th I th yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think we're just kind of throwing some some ideas out right for that you could come back with something you can further discuss that out i think jim's point is we're going at a work session maybe to dive a little deeper tom you know i love to play devil's advocate and i just can't help myself um 
you know, Mr. Rachels had brought up the topic of noise. Have you heard the printing press at Victor Lundin's? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I know. <coughs> I know all about just what you're saying. Making sure we're looking at the whole picture here. You yeah. Know. No, I understand completely. But it's just if we're going to start man having this, I'm going to get. More, I'm going to. I'm going to go look at this thing and see what the process is. If we put that downtown, I mean, it's like, you know. <coughs> uh, one of the aspects of this that you can add to topics to look into would be code enforcement. When we've got a store downtown, part of our <coughs> question is, you know, who do we <coughs> restrict access to, as you'd mentioned, and how do we how do we track that during business hours and whatnot? It's up to us currently at the city level to do code enforcement. And that has to do with who can go in and who can't. But if you go into a manufacturing facility for anybody can come and go, that's, uh, is that up to us? I mean, are we also going to be responsible for inspecting who's working there and doing background checks and all the stuff that goes into what we would do in a retail space in the manufacturing space? I mean, you've got the same stuff in there, the same risks associated in many ways. And so then does that fall on us as well, that we've got to periodically just drop in and see who's hanging around in there? That <coughs> opens up a whole other ball of questions. Tom. I, I guess in response to that, one, one general point that I've made and I would make again is that I, I think whatever we do for THC manufacturing, we also would have to do for a brewery or a distillery. You know, I mean, they're, they're um, mind-altering substances, both alcohol and THC, and I don't know why we need to pick on one versus the other. It's just kind of my general point. Yeah. Other, yeah. And then with the new laws coming in and then taking away a lot of our rights to regulate, I understand even the state says you have to be 21 to purchase, but we put in the ordinance that you have to be 21 even to be in the building. Are we going to be able to even enforce that? You know, because personally I'd like to see, you know, either in an industrial area if they're going to manufacture it or if they're going to do it in town, then do it on their facility. Thanks, Brent. I guess I would like to uh, <clears throat> maybe refer to Chief uh, Bergren to, um, you know, get a lot of suggestion from the uh, that end of it, maybe during that work session, if uh, that would be part of it, because um, he's probably the most versed in it and his office than maybe anybody is. Thank you. Yeah, certainly. We'll definitely send you an invite to that, Thanks. Chief. <laughs> yeah, I just want to give you some more work, Kyle. <laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> no, of course. Yeah, Jim. I, I think as far as regulations go, I think city can regulate tougher than state. There's, it's, it's, it's weird because I went to... I, I believe they can do that. Not on this one. You're not not on this one? No. Nope. The, yeah, okay. no. It's, they took a lot gonna, of the authority out of our hands. Okay. St. Paul's going to be taking everything away from us. That's... All right. It's so all going to be done down there. So we have some things for consideration and we can bring back and we'll make sure to invite the chief. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't got enough to do anyway. So we'll Thanks. Uh, uh, <clears throat> speaking of the chief, we've got a couple new business items. So, uh, chief of Public Safety, Cal Bergen, we've got a BCA joint powers agreement to start off with. Sure. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Honor. Uh, this is just kind of more of a housekeeping item. Uh, we've been in an agreement, had a joint powers agreement with the BCA for a number of years. It has uh, expired. Uh, we have a very uh, talented young man in our investigative division that just recently went to training. And uh, in order for us to get reimbursed from the state, we have to ensure that the uh, joint powers agreement is up to date. So. Before you is, is a copy of an agreement that we've been uh, in with the state for years. And again, it's just to uh, make that uh, up to date. So that's what's before you there. Thanks, Chief. We can bring this to the council for approval on Monday night. Scott, for that. thank you. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Second. Any questions for Chief Bergeron? All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Next item is a mental health co-response social work with the county. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. And again, uh, I see Commissioner Rognes is here uh, today as well. But I know that the uh, tax levy committee, I think, is meeting later today right as well. And, and some of the discussion about mental illness was brought up during their last meeting. So I wanted to get this to you in a timely manner. Um, but we reached out 
to the county back in January to to discuss uh, what we call a co-responder approach to dealing with uh, <coughs> mental illness, uh, not only within the city of Fergus Falls but countywide. And um, uh, essentially, it's it's very much a, a team approach where law enforcement and uh, social work staff go out into the communities and, and try to uh, deal with some of the issues pertaining to uh, to mental illness. Um, we had an opportunity just yesterday to uh, talk to the, the county board uh, regarding this, and uh, they seemed very receptive uh, to this idea. So today, basically, what I'm um, asking for is just a resolution of, of support. Um, I think that this is probably one of the biggest needs uh, socially uh, within our community. Um, not just ours again it's it's countywide it's statewide um, as i explained yesterday to the county board huge gap was left uh, unfilled with the closure of the state hospital and the state has basically kind of walked away um, and and it's really kind of fallen on law enforcement over the years and we're really not the right you know we can help people that are in immediate crisis and get them to a facility the problem is there are no more facilities to take them to. And so we're just looking at a, a kind of a first step, better approach to try to help some of these people uh, with with their mental health needs. And uh, again, uh, the cost to us for the social worker, uh, there would be none, none for the city that would be incurred uh, by the county. There's a cost to us as a police department uh, we'll just work within our, our normal budget. Uh, we will assign a person, uh, it won't be their full-time job, but a portion of their duties uh, will to be on this mental health team and, and go out and do these uh, evaluations. So uh, that's what's before you is just a, a resolution of support for, for this concept and this pilot project. Thanks, Chief. Thanks for your work on this and thanks for the part hopefully eventual partnership with the county and to address this needs thank, thanks again for all of it thanks scott thanks, thanks brent questions for chief bergen all in favor of the motion say aye aye, aye. oh same sign a motion carries and that's all we have this morning there's just one one thing that could we bring up um at the planning commission on monday night um the farmers market apparently has been struggling to try to come to some terms on getting s some additional signage to indicate that the farmers market is down there and um, obviously one or two of them are upset because you know they feel they were forced to come downtown and now they can't put their signage and i wonder if on monday night we can kind of just see what we need to do to smooth over the relationship Sure. If we can also get that letter sent out <coughs> to us. Perfect. Yep. So apparently they, they wrote a letter and it, it's been sort of hung up in cyberspace. Okay. So no. we'll bring that, uh, we'll put that on the uh, agenda for Monday night. Well, and just to be clear, Your Honor, the code will have to be changed. So yep. staff doesn't have the latitude to allow them to do what they want to do. And we've been in discussions trying to provide alternate locations. We've allowed this sign non-compliant for several years. And with the just insurgence of requests and non-compliant signs, it's like we have to either change our code or start to do a better job of um, uniformly enforcing that. So I think it's a good conversation to have. But um, I caution the council that there'll likely be code changes involved with that. So it'll be a little bit of a process. And the planning commission is actually reviewing yep. the signage, signage code language. <coughs> and, and maybe that's something that. And they received the letter and they, because yep. it's to the planning commission, yep. they've discussed the letter. And we have not received any further outreach from right. the farmer's market. So, um, so do you want to start at the planning commission level or do you want the council to discuss? Well, I, th I think it would be good if we could at least see the letter. Yeah, we can see, see, what, see what the content was. And then I would also think if we're going to review the signage ordinance, uh, not to put Mr. Kwame on the spot, but he is a signage kind of like expert. Um, and maybe that's something that, you know, we should kind of encourage involvement with somebody that understands signs. But yeah, I, 
I don't disagree. Thank you. But if the Planning Commission is... Yeah. Sorry. Review, the, let's let them... Uh, let's find a way that we can have a discussion if yeah. we need to, but let allow them to do their work. Yep. Yeah. So we'll share the letters so, as time so you guys are all aware of the conversation, and then we'll let the Planning Commission bring to the Council how they want to resolve that issue with that with the code changes, and then we'll work it through our process yeah. here. Yeah. We won't see anything on Monday night, but we'll, we'll let get that the letter and then yeah. Yeah. the Planning Commission meets before uh -huh. our July, first meeting in July, correct? Yeah. No, they've already our, met. They uh, met on sec Monday. Second meeting yeah. in July. Okay. Third, well, so just third just <clears throat> also to relating, relating to um, signage, I was uh, <clears throat> contacted by a resident of Third Ward about some of the signs in the parks. And I don't. I haven't been to all the parks. We just met at Broadway Park, and it had to do with. It's kind of faded out. It was you know to re report suspicious activity, you know it, to call the number. It's actually a dispatch for um, phone number, <clears throat> but also too. And I didn't look at the other entrances, kind of hours because I know there's you know things go on in parks after hours and things like that. I think um, the the concern was there's some. Re, kind of look at that signage for the parks and maybe have uh, even, you know, it was a great point that was brought up too by that individual was um, even, you know, it's 998-8555 was the number. You know, now we got to dial the 218 before that. You know, it's as simple as that. And that one was pretty faded out and it was getting hard to read too. But maybe we should kind of look at some of those signs throughout the city parks if we can put in some, if we need to add times and the different entrances to the parks. So if we could maybe look at that too, that would be great. Sounds great. We can do that. Yep. Thank Thanks. you, Al. Anything else? Yes, Lynn. Other than the THC issue, is there anything that you do not want on the consent agenda for November 8th? Unless you really want a long meeting the night before. Yeah. 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 Yeah.